There is a somewhat obscure but important issue that affects all artillery cannons. This issue becomes more prevalent the more range you have, but is observable even with very low levels of artillery range. This is a relatively large mega base we're in right now with several hundred hours, 2 million SPM, etc. So my artillery range has been cranked relatively high at this point. We are currently at artillery range 18 in research, so we are at about 1400-ish automatic artillery range. Now, to explain it real quickly, the core issue is that artillery cannons and artillery wagons, when scanning for targets, scan one chunk at a time. And there is no way to increase this rate of scanning or to have it scan everything at once. It's clearly something that's done for UPS optimization, so it's not something that's likely to change. Uh, if it were to change, it probably would be worse for UPS, but they scan one chunk at a time. Now, if you remember your, you know, basic geometry classes, you remember that the area of a circle is the square of the radius of that circle. So you, you double the radius, you're, you're more than doubling the area. And since artillery range is ca is uh, researched as a radius, this means as you crank artillery range, the effective area that is being scanned increases drastically. It becomes huge. Now, what happens is that since a cannon or a wagon takes a very, very long time to scan that very large area, during that entire time it's scanning, it's considered active. As you can see, I've got a five seconds of inactivity threshold on my wagons here, which is set like that because if I, the train pulls into the fire base and you know there's nests within blasting range, I want the artillery wagon on the train to help out the cannon to clear everything faster because otherwise it'll just drop the shells, you know, head back to base, and then you know have to bring back more shells because this will have been firing in the meantime, clearing more. It's better that it just helps clear out anything in the area and then heads back once the entire area is cleared. These two will always have essentially the same range. Well, right now they're different because this is normal and that's legendary, but don't mind that. You can see it's just now going. The total amount of time it takes to do that scan right now is in the vein of a couple of minutes it's it's a fairly long it's a fairly long period now to more clearly il illustrate this we're gonna go into the sandbox here not you uh, you and here I have a little controlled test bed here where we've got a train and a wagon and a quickly made death world so there's a million biters everywhere and you can see if I crank up the speed so that it clears everything in the area and it's just cycling through. If I drop the speed to normal, let me have it cycle through one more time. Like right now as it pulls in, you can watch the 10 seconds uh, timer pass. And then right when it's maybe like, you know, three, four seconds, the inactivity kicks in because it's done scanning and the train is ready to go. So th this is at default range on a normal wagon. So in an automatic range of only 224, it takes three to four seconds to scan the entire area. Let me show that one more time. Right there. Oh, a little late there. But it's very consistent. It, it, it doesn't vary at all. We see it pull in. Oh, didn't mean to go that slow. Pulls in about three four seconds to scan and then the inactivity kicks in because it's done scanning and it's ready to move now we're gonna go ahead and get just a few levels of artillery range here so that's only five levels of artillery range so that brings us that more than doubles the effective automatic range now look what happens to the inactivity time first we need to speed it up let it clear out all the biters that are now in range. Let's take a few seconds, even at this UPS. There we go, so now it's cleared everything. 
And we're gonna watch it come in now. And we're gonna watch that 10 second pass. So right now is when it would have started moving. If it was at the lower range. But because we're now at about 500 range, as you can see, it's taking much, much longer to scan. And as a result, this train is now stuck at the firebase for what can be a very, very long period of time. Well, as a finished scan, as you can see right there, it was somewhere around like, you know, 15, 20 seconds now in order to keep scanning everything that's within its range. Now to give you some, I've done a lot of testing regarding this to give you some quick numbers, some rough numbers. At about three, th now it's worth noting that whether it's legendary, whether you get the range via a legendary wagon or via just the artillery range research, the effect is the same. The scan time is based purely on the actual area covered, which is a function of the radius, of the, the function of the artillery range itself. So it doesn't matter if you hit a thousand range via like a wagon, a legendary wagon, and then some extra research or with just pure research, the end result is the same. As you can see, it takes significantly longer now than three to four seconds to finish scanning. So a few rough numbers that I uh, calculated at about 336 range, it's about 10 seconds. At about 840 range, so a little more than double, it jumps up to 42 seconds. So more than four times the time. And if we just slightly less than double that to about 1344 range, it goes up to 180 seconds or nearly three minutes. Three minutes of scan time. Now, this also has some other consequences. It's not just with the, the train. If you have an artillery turret... That's just scanning a very, very large area. What you'll notice sometimes is that it takes so long to scan that you'll see a significant biter expansion into within the range before the turret will finally acquire it. I've been calling this the artillery delay issue or the artillery lethargy issue. doesn't matter what you want to call it. Um, it's not really a problem that you can really solve for a turret because, as I said, there's no way to force a scan or get it to scan faster. And it's very clear that this has been done for UPS reasons. You know, it very clearly scanning probably, like, I would guess one chunk per tick if I had to just take a wild guess as to what it's actually doing. That seems most likely what's happening here. But the one thing that it does affect that you can do something about is the train itself. So if you're like me and you want the train to still be helping shoot things when you're at low artillery ranges, but once you get to higher ranges, I don't want the train getting stuck at the fire bases for, you know, three, four minutes. You know, at that range, you know, just drop off the shells, leave, and then let the artillery turret take care of it on its own time. Then what you need to do is you need to get rid of this inactivity timer. Now this was an interesting problem to solve because it resulted in the development of a new circuit which I had not designed before. It's a relatively uh, simple circuit, especially if you're somewhat familiar with programming, etc. Um, we're look it's uh, we're calling it a delta listener or a steady state detector or whatever you want to call it. Uh, chat had quite a few different names for it. Uh, we have a lot of programmers in our chat, and uh, <laughs> there were at least six, seven different names, but we decided delta listener was the coolest sounding and more and it will still be an accurate name. It listens for a delta. So the circuit we're talking about that we had to design is this is currently in the useful circuits blueprint book that's on the spreadsheet is uh, is this one right here. So what what it does is it I need to get out of remote view mode is it uh, listens for a change in the state of the of the signal coming in and if it changes it changes the signal so right here if the light is on it means the signal is constant but if there is any change in the signal for any reason it resets and then will turn back on after a certain period of time now the way this was designed was by utilizing tick delay. 
So we have the one signal being read out of this uh, constant combinator, which should be hooked up to whatever you want to hook it up to. You have to make sure the green wire is hooked up to the first combinator and the red to the second. And all this does, all this combinator does, is delay the signal going through the green wire by one tick. We use the tick delay. And this just looks at both signals, and if they ever don't match, send the reset signal to a timer circuit. And this sets the amount of time you want to watch. We have it set at 1.2K, a.k.a. 20 seconds. So the, the way this functions is that if this state changes, has changed within the past 20 seconds, there's a rolling timer window of 20 seconds, then it interrupts the check mark and turns out the light. It says, like, hey, the state has changed. And, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to reverse this. Have it go the other way if you want, just by changing this. And that's how we do the artillery trains now. That's the adjustment that has been made to the fire bases. So if we go look at the actual game right now, the current version, this has been something that has been deployed to every uh, fire base and thunder base, thunder base being the Tesla turret version. They now have all these combinators here. Um... I might have forgotten to deploy it to that one. We'll look over this one. But this one over here, we now have it hooked up to the turret itself reading ammunition. So if the turret ammunition count changes, it resets the timer, which interrupts this check mark, which is a signal being sent to train. And if you look at the train schedules, they've now been changed. So instead of having an inactivity condition, it is now set for that circuit condition. This has replaced that inactivity condition. So essentially the way this functions now is that if the artillery cannon has fired within the past 20 seconds, or sorry, it, to be more accurate, if the ammo within the artillery cannon has changed within the past 20 seconds, it will, it will uh, hold the train up at the station say hey wait you know there might be targets nearby for you to acquire however there's a limit of 20 seconds so that as you get the artillery range higher it doesn't hold those trains up indefinitely so yeah there you go that's the problem and the solution for trains at the very least there is no solution to actually make turrets scan faster so unfortunately um i kind of wish there was like a force scan button that would just cause you know you could press maybe down here to just cause it to, you know, scan everything within range, UPS be damned. Because, as I, as I was saying earlier, one of the problems you run into at higher chili ranges, they take so long to scan this effective area that you can sometimes see, like, a biter nest, like, expand into the area and sometimes get relatively big before the turret finally acquires the target. Um, at the range we're at right now, 1,500, more than 1,500, like 2,100 or so, I didn't calculate the numbers for this, but if we're just extrapolating for the pre from the previous numbers, you know, it's easily something like three, four minutes it will take to scan that entire area. So there you have it, the artillery range problem. This affects all artillery wagons, all artillery uh, turrets, regardless of what range you have. Even at very small ranges, it still takes a little bit of time. As you can see in the test bed, it still took three to four seconds at the lowest possible range. But it's something which gets worse the more artillery range you get. How you want to deal with this problem is up to you. You can either, you know, say limit your artillery range on your cannons if you, and, and put artillery bases further out if you don't want it to be scanning for as long. Or you can just let the range get cranked and do something like this so that the trains don't get held up there for some ridiculous amount of time when multiple fire bases need ammo. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Thanks for watching. My name is Stupid Fat Hobbit, and I stream at Twitch TV SF Hobbit.